Hi. Let's learn about the adjusted closing price. The adjusted closing price amends a stock's closing price to reflect that stock's value after accounting for any corporate actions. It is often used in examining historical returns or doing a detailed analysis of past performance. Stock values are stated in terms of the closing price and the adjusted closing price. The closing price is the raw price which is just the cash value of the last transacted price before the market closes. The adjusted closing price factors in anything that might affect the stock price after the market closes. A stock's price is typically affected by the supply and demand of market participants. However, some corporate actions, such as stock splits, dividends, and rights offerings, affect a stock's price. Adjustments allow investors to obtain an accurate record of the stock's performance. Investors should understand how corporate actions are accounted for in a stock's adjusted closing price. It is especially useful when examining historical returns because it gives analysts an accurate representation of the firm's equity value. A stock split is a corporate action intended to make the firm's shares more affordable for average investors. A stock split does not change a company's total market capitalization, but it does affect the company's stock price. For example, a company's board of directors may decide to split the company's stock 3, 4, 1. Therefore, the company's shares outstanding increase by a multiple of 3, while its share price is divided by 3. Suppose a stock closed at $300 the day before its stock split. In this case, the closing price is adjusted to $100 per share to maintain a consistent standard of comparison. Similarly, all other previous closing prices for that company would be divided by 3 to obtain the adjusted closing prices. Common distributions that affect a stock's price include cash dividends and stock dividends. The difference between cash dividends and stock dividends is that shareholders are entitled to a predetermined price per share and additional shares, respectively. For example, assume a company declared a $1 cash dividend and was trading at $51 per share before then. All other things being equal, the stock price would fall to $50 because that $1 per share is no longer part of the company's assets. However, the dividends are still part of the investor's returns. By subtracting dividends from previous stock prices, we obtain the adjusted closing prices and a better picture of returns. A stock's adjusted closing price also reflects rights offerings that may occur. A rights offering is an issue of rights given to existing shareholders, which entitles the shareholders to subscribe to the rights issue in proportion to their shares. That will lower the value of existing shares because supply increases have a dilutive effect on the existing shares. For example, assume a company declares a rights offering, in which existing shareholders are entitled to one additional share for every two shares owned. Assume the stock is trading at $50, and existing shareholders can purchase additional shares at a subscription price of $45. After the rights offering, the adjusted closing price is calculated based on the adjusting factor and the closing price. The main advantage of adjusted closing prices is that they make it easier to evaluate stock performance. Firstly, the adjusted closing price helps investors understand how much they would have made by investing in a given asset. Most obviously, a 2 for 1 stock split does not cause investors to lose half their money. Secondly, the adjusted closing price allows investors to compare the performance of two or more assets. Aside from the clear issues with stock splits, failing to account for dividends tends to understate the profitability of value stocks and dividend growth stocks. Using the adjusted closing price is also essential when comparing the returns of different asset classes over the long term. For example, the prices of high-yield bonds tend to fall in the long run. That does not mean these bonds are necessarily poor investments. Their high yields offset the losses and more, which can be seen by looking at the adjusted closing prices of high-yield bond funds. The nominal closing price of a stock or other asset can convey useful information. This information is destroyed by converting that price into an adjusted closing price. In actual practice, many speculators place buy and sell orders at certain prices, such as $100. As a result, a sort of tug of war can take place between bulls and bears at these key prices. 
If the bulls win, a breakout may occur and send the asset price soaring. Similarly, a win for the bears can lead to a breakdown and further losses. The adjusted close stock price obscures these events. By looking at the actual closing price at the time, investors can get a better idea of what was going on and understand contemporary accounts. In general, adjusted closing prices are less useful for more speculative stocks. Here are four key takeaways. 1. The adjusted closing price amends a stock's closing price to reflect that stock's value after accounting for any corporate actions. 2. The closing price is the raw price, which is just the cash value of the last transacted price before the market closes. 3. The adjusted closing price factors in corporate actions, such as stock splits, dividends, and rights offerings. 4. The adjusted closing price can obscure the impact of key nominal prices and stock splits on prices in the short term. Hope this would help. Thanks for watching.